Hello, and thanks for messing around. This time in Vampire Survivor's Beswick episode 256, Ghost Lena will be beating every stage in one video. Yes, that is correct. The remaining 21 stages that Lino needs to be all in one video. Wrap yourself in for four and a half hours of fun as you watch an invincible character that does no damage effortlessly chew through the entire game. Thankfully, a really funny story happened to me recently that will more than fill the gaps. So, there I was, minding my own business, walking down the street at midnight when all of a sudden, we hit the ground running, but man oh man, let me tell you, you've never seen someone more pissed off than a dog missing half it. Let's face it, we just can't beat him. I looked the twins right in the eyes, sucked in my chest, and peeled over like the first thing we'd been thwacked upside the head with a stuffed animal. I mean, sure, it had granite feet, but it didn't hit him that hard. So he was in crabs that just came in from out of nowhere, screaming about crab battle and breaking my knives. Like, what the hell? Just trying to stab a tree, but now here I was, looking some ice cream on the hottest day of the year so far. Three licks in, and it was already turning to slug. I sighed and gave it to the... Garage doors were really weird if you think about it. They just keep falling apart in front of my eyes. It was really just a distraction from the guy holding his hostage, but boy oh boy did not work out when... The gun fired, and wow oh wow, I've never seen a bigger mess outside of my own content. Like, dear God, I was like looking in a mirror, and not the least because it was my evil mirror twin here to save the day? Really, like, who says that in this day and age? Uh, well, when a literal disembodied copy of your soul from the future fused with your one true love says it, it has to be true, right? Anyway, me, the twins, knees, and me all got together to beat the bad grammar right out of myself. I mean, me before me? Really. So, after that bad grammar was beaten out of me, it started mutating and grew like 50 feet. Future me passed the sig and I'm like, well, clearly I got it started from somewhere, and I took a drag and coughed my lung out and it just ran over and combined with bad grammar and the six of us just sighed and ready to- Bicycles came flying around us every which way. Like, none of us, not even past future clone me, knew what the hell was going on until from out of the darkness came a figure clad all in orange with a grin as wide as a bike type. Gentlemen, it said, it's time for partying. Whoa! Whose float as free as water went even. Bastard. We had 10 kegs down before an hour, and we we're gonna beat that on hour two if three of them hadn't exploded. Got booze everywhere, but that's when I realized it wasn't actually some sort of lemon beer, it was lemonade stands had suddenly propped up all along the neighborhood. I knew this was the beginning of some malarkey, so I grabbed my energy sword and got to work reading all the children's businesses. They cried and pointed and called me, Bad man, bad man! The sound pounded in my ears as we swooped in low. Really a lot of noise, the blaze of the chopper crashing over the waves of the River Delta. I locked and loaded my pulse rifle, said a prayer to my godly self, and got ready to hop drop into a hell of a birthday party, that was for sure. Never seen so many balloon arches in my life, and I once went to the Balloon Arch Showcase in New York, New York. Went up to the debutante Duclair and asked her what she thought of it, and she shook her head, grabbed a hat pin, and started stabbing. Holes everywhere. I've only seen that many holes one other time in my life, and that was after Duclair stabbed everyone at her party. Boy, it was my face right after that faux pas. Mostly from all bloody good timing, his extant dropped the rocket launcher to rode its hands, he just missed so gullingly I had to actually face palm in real life. Which was good, because that's what the bugs did, and it made me feel like I was on a Nickelodeon show from the 90s. Yeah, shit was shit. Sir, all you need in life, and I try to live by that city. The largest pile of fish guts for three miles, a fact that I wrote on a sign pointing my way to my adobe. Never get any visitors. They must be jealous of all of my- Well, the flowers, they say. They always say that. Well, I did, and then a beast stung me, and now on my nose it's all red and swollen. Which didn't make it any easier when chips came a calling and everything was eyes on red as the ball spun and spun and spun. And everyone but I prayed to some Lord Almighty somewhere as it slowly clinked around. Beads of sweat drew with every bounce and finally tipped over in black eyes on just every single one of the kids. I knew violence was bad in my youth, but kids these days just don't know how easy it is. Got it was portable everything in their pocket. Back in my days, we had paper maps. We could burn them for warmth when we got lost in the snow, like now. They pulled out my paper map and started macking the containers of juice around, trying to find which one had the future me's wedding ring in it. But none of the bottles had anything but pure strain apple juice in it. That's when a creepy sense of familiarity dawned on me. It's not apple juice. I made again. I just sighed and drew my katana. It was over. Once and for all, it was over. All my evil mirror forms, double clones, and future variants were gone. Popped out of existence as I would have just accomplished my goal. Time is a weird thing when you erase yourself. Nothing happened just instantly. So, on time was just, like, really boring. Like, incredibly boring, so I just sort of willed myself back into existence out of sheer boredom. Luckily, it was right as I had a very fun moment. I swiftly resulted in a quick balls everywhere. 
Soccer balls, footballs, baseballs, basketballs, and more. Never thought I'd see a sporting goods store explode like that. But then again, I never thought I'd see the sun turn into a random dude either. The day was full of surprises. It wasn't even over yet. Surprise! Everyone yelled as I walked in. But it wasn't even my birthday. I just started singing, it's your birthday, robot. Which just had me confused because I was cyborgic at this point and they were just raging. Two of us linked hands, looked into the sun's and she broke down crying. I asked what was wrong and she said, this isn't real. Then I fell out of bed, annoyed the only time I could get action around every corner as I returned fire to the guys. Like, man, when does this have to happen again? Only so many times a guy could kill his evil twins before it could get boring. So I sighed and drew my broadsword, ordered the ship with the usual pleasantries, but there was something off about the whole thing. Well, it didn't take too long for them to reseal themselves as their people crowned me their king. Which would normally be a good thing, but the Lizard King actually has no real power. It's all in the Queen. And her first edict was to order me based and readied for eating, and I had never been so filled as I gorged myself on my last meal. You were literally facing an army coming to end the world. You gotta take the wins where you can. So, I grabbed my hand it to them. They may have conquered 500 worlds, but really, they were pretty neat guys when it comes down to it. Sure, the cannibalism was kind of weird, but some people need to be eaten, you know? Evidently, no, the tribunal didn't agree, and I was swiftly sentenced to 2,000 years for crimes against human decency. It was weird, since they weren't humans, but they were willing to let it slide as long as I got on my knees in the service tunnel, just dragging wire after wire through tunnels. Just not the work for a guy my size. But, well, when the man-eat bugs started coming out of the walls, it suddenly made more sense. Kind of worked out pretty well until I sneezed, and boy, how did that just offend everyone. I mean, I knew I was offensive, but the looks they just gave me, just dead stares like I killed all their grandmas. Turned out to be kind of true as they started dropping from the sky like flies. Oops. The following that was over for good. Evil hordes, stalwart bastions, and all my adventures were over. Just me, my wife, and my wife's alternate time-traveling variant of me, and oh, it wasn't over. I sighed and drew my Tabar, then I woke up. It was all just a dream. A very bad dream driven by the deranged mind of a man who averaged one view a chapter for almost a million words. That's when the words leapt at me and began to wrangle all creativity out of the medium. Same schlock, over and over, and any idea to the different gets crucified with no views. I don't want a ship, it's so lowbrow. And why is it this part of the script? Who even wrote this slop? There it is. Done. For real. I promise. No more teases, lies, or anything else. It cost me everything I held dear and everything I would hold dear. But the world was saved. And as I looked at her grave, I considered the cost too high. Future me's and their loved ones. I knew what I would do. What I would do. What I was doing. For I was Ghost Lino all along. And why was I? Oh, well, uh, that's enough of that. Phew. That was a long day, but it's not quite over yet, though. Megalomania's got a say in that. Beautiful, isn't it? 515, 516, 517, 518, 519, 520, 21, 22, 23, 4, 25, 26, 28, 29, 30, 31. 34, 535 steak is done. 1,422 go. Yay, yay, yay. And the fourth wave is going to make it even faster. Stick around for that. It's going to be very, very cooperative. Thanks for watching this silly, silly nonsense. Thank you anyone who has liked, disliked, commented, or subscribed. The support keeps me going. Please do so if you haven't. Either way, I hope you have a good day and you keep messing around in the Vampire Survivor's Beswick.